Hi, I'm Ron Clark. I want to talk this week um, more about the elements and the vital energy. Um, the vital energy, exercise the vital energy are basically step three. Um, you have the uh, accumulation of the vital energy and the uh, movement of vital energy accumulation into various body parts. That's in step three proper. But the step three appendix, you have other uh, uses of the vital energy, other techniques of the vital energy, specifically projecting the, or radiating the vital energy, number one, and then projecting the vital energy. Now, the work with the elements follows the same pattern as he introduces with the vital energy. Begin with um, accumulating in the whole body, then various organs, then projection of the elements. And that is uh, step three, four, and five. Uh, basically cover the various uh, elements. In step three, you're breathing the elements and or accumulating the elements. Step four, you're accumulating the elements in the whole body and then in parts of the body. And then step five is all about projecting the elements. Um, <clears throat> then he follows the same process, essentially, with the fluids later on. So this is how we get to um, uh, proficiency with these substances that we manipulate as magicians. We start with the vital energy, which is fundamental, rudimentary for every hermetic magician should be a master of the vital energy by the end of step three. Okay? That appendix, the step three, is really important and is part of step three that you need to contend with. You can't be satisfied with just the exercises of the vital energy in step three proper, okay? Um, <clears throat> when it comes to um, accumulating in the various organs, this takes a, a slightly different mindset than accumulating in the whole body. Okay, the, the first option with um, uh, the organs is you accumulate in the whole body and then you move it to the accumulation to the organ itself. Say I'm accumulating in my gut. Okay, I accumulate in the whole body and then compress it into my gut. The next option is to transfer my awareness into my gut. Okay? So I put my awareness down in my gut and then I inhale the uh, vital energy or element with my awareness directly into my gut, okay? Now, <clears throat> ordinarily I don't truly transfer my whole awareness to the organ to inhale the vital energy or an element. I can split my awareness, split my attention. Part of my attention is in the body part and I'm, you know, inhaling it into the body part. It doesn't take a full transfer of awareness to be able to do that. Okay? Um, so, there's that method. Then, a third method is to just directly you know, direct the vital energy or element from the universe without any breathing directly into my body part. And that is the same as uh, directly into uh, an external object. And this is part of the work with the vital energy and elements too, is filling an external object or space with an accumulation of the element. 
Now we go through different methods of that. We accumulate in the whole body and we project it at the, the object or into space um, in a specific shape, etc. That's number one. Number two is we, you know, accumulate it directly from the universe into the object or space through a transference of awareness. So we've transferred our awareness into this object and we draw the uh, element or vital energy into the object from inside of the object. Fairly simple. Um, the third option is we draw it just directly from the universe, cause it to enter the object or space. So let's say vital energy, if we want a sphere of vital energy, we can, you know, accumulate it in our body and project uh, the accumulation into a sphere. Very simple to do. Or we can, in our imagination, define a space where we want the accumulation to be and then cause it to inhabit that space. You know, we, we draw the vital energy from the universe and fill that space or that object without a transference of awareness. We can also do it, the transference of awareness, so we're inside that object and we accumulate, you know, we draw the um, vital energy element into the object. Um, but we don't have to bring the vital energy or the element or the fluid through our body in order to charge something with it or or create just a space filled with the element. We can draw it directly from the universe, and that—that that is the end technique that we are aiming for in this process. We learn by drawing it into our body, and we, we identify what it feels like to have that accumulation of vital energy or the element. And so once we know how it feels, how that accumulation of the vital energy or element feels, we can then create that in a something a separate space or a separate object. Um, but it's only once we have that feeling and we get used to manipulating the vital energy or element that it, we are enabled, basically, to um, just draw it directly from the universe. But it requires going through that process of, you know, going through the body first and understanding what it feels like. So then we can imagine, you know, what it feels like externally. Um, <clears throat> for instance, uh, the fire. It warms us when we uh, accumulate it in our body. We feel the heat and the, that uh, energy, the activity of the fire. Okay? So, when it comes to creating a sphere of fire external to us, we know what the fire is, really is, so we can grab it from the universe and cause it to accumulate in this specific area. And we feel the heat from the sphere. You know, we feel that, that exciting energy, that stimulating energy. We feel it from the uh, uh, sphere of fire that we have caused to form. Okay? We can use a breath too if we want, because sometimes, you know, especially in the beginning, that's helpful. You know, we sort of breathe it into um, the, that area, from within that area, in the same sense that we 
move our awareness into our body part, we can do that with an external object or space. <clears throat> we can also push it into uh, a space. For example, uh, when I cast a circle, a magical circle, uh, and this is something that I suggest for anybody who is at that stage uh, in initiation to hermetics where they're capable of doing this. It's a very... Uh, um, genuine way of casting a true magical circle involving the four elemental quarters. Okay? So, I turn to the east. I create a space, usually a very large space, sort of like a doorway, a sized space of the air element. And I condense it. I accumulate and condense the air element. And there it is. There is a feeling of endless openness, of floating, you know, very lightweight feeling and of calm, a very soothing feeling comes from the east and is accumulation of the air element in the east uh, quadrant of my circle. Then I turn to the south and the fire. And I accumulate the fire and I feel the heat from this raging inferno uh, to the south. There is literally an accumulation of the fire element in the south of my circle. And then we go to the west. And I accumulate the earth element. And it is grounding. It is solid. It is sort of paralyzing in its influence. And that's in the west, in my circle. And then I go to the north of my circle, and I accumulate the water element. Oh, it is so cooling. It is uh, fluid. You know, it's oh, in the north, in my circle. So I have all four elements literally in the quadrants of my circle. Now, an interesting thing about doing this is <clears throat> each of these accumulations creates a sort of doorway to the elemental realm. It can. It doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily a doorway, but it can become a doorway. Um, this has to do with the density of your accumulation and your will. Um, it can be a doorway and you can, through these doorways, um, communicate with the elemental realms and the beings of the elements are right there. And you can have all four elements represented factually in your circle. Now, Barton doesn't tell you in initiation into Hermetics what you use the elements for. You know, what good is an accumulation of the air element? You know, what in healing work does an accumulation of the air element in my spleen do? Uh, so, you know, you have to figure it out. <clears throat> Basically, you have to figure it out yourself. And that is what, you know, accumulating the elements in your body is all about. You learn from that, by observing, taking note of the effects that you feel from the elements in your own body. 
you come to know the elements in, intimately, totally intimately, in the vital energy. You know, you know the effects of the vital energy in your own body, in your own practice. So, you begin to learn what you can use the elements for in your everyday life. I'll give you some examples how I use the elements. Um, I have visitors every so often um, that come specifically to uh, discuss Hermetics and Barden's work and just things in general. So what I'll do is before they arrive, um, I will accumulate the vital energy and have um, an accumulation, a, a subtle accumulation of vital energy in the room that is inviting and stimulating. Okay, and that's sort of background, inviting and stimulating. Then most often I'll set up an accumulation, a sphere of the air element. And the air element does two things. Number one, it relaxes everybody. It calms things. It, it creates a, a clarity, a mental clarity. Um, and facilitates communication. It's perfect for communication. Clear, honest, relaxed communication. Sometimes I'll invoke, or, you know, I'll, I'll create a, an accumulation of the water element. Now I'm not projecting the air element into them, I'm just accumulating it in the room, in a sphere, so that when it's next to them, it influences them. When it's between us, it influences the both of us. So these are limited exposure kind of things. Um, sometimes I'll um, accumulate the water element. If, if I sense that uh, we need some emotional honesty, some emotion needs to come into the conversation, there needs to be an emotional opening in this conversation, and the water element helps with that. If my guest is falling asleep, I'll uh, either accumulate a little bit of the fire element to get things going, or I will, uh, you know, focus the vital energy into them, give them a little boost of energy. Um, <clears throat> When I go for a walk in the mornings, which I do most mornings, where I walk, there's a lot of people walking their dogs. And I just, I love dogs, you know. When, when I see a dog coming, my heart lifts. And when the dog arrives, I get down on my knees and interact with the dog. So what I do is I accumulate the vital energy in my hands. I get to a nice charge of the vital energy in my hands. So my hands are buzzing with vital energy in advance of the dog arriving. And I give it to the dogs. You know, most dogs just suck it up. They really like the healing of the vital energy. Um, and I'll do the same. Anytime I'm going to encounter someone who needs a charge of the vital energy, needs a little bit of healing, is most often with vital energy. Um, if uh, someone has, you know, a hand swollen with arthritis, I'll fill it with the water element. And that relieves it greatly. I use it in the, the uh, crafts work that I do, it, a lot of it is very uh, di very hard on my hands. There's a lot of tension, a lot of repeated uh, actions that uh, require a lot of muscular tension and exertion of my hands. 
and uh, periodically my hands will be very tired and very stiff. Water element takes it away in just a second. So I accumulate a little bit of water into my hands and they are quickly repaired and I can go back to doing more of the same damage to my hands. Um, yeah, there's... There's just a million uses, especially for the vital energy. Uses of the elements are element specific, you know? Um, but the vital energy is very universal, basically. It's, it's not good for calming situations down, um, but it is good for stimulating and for healing. Uh, for enacting one's will, it is always very good. I use it a lot with my computer, the mechanical uh, structure of my computer. I've been doing this for years. Uh, uh, vital energy, sometimes uh, the uh, autonylite, and sometimes the Catherine Brilliance have all kept my computers going for four years. Um, so there, there are just a million uses one can put the elements and the vital energy too, and that's the point. You've got to go out and use them. Now that you uh, are discovering them, you have to make use of them. And the more you make use of them, the greater your mastery over them becomes. The more variety of circumstances in which you can employ them, the more readily you can make use of them. So in the, those times when it's like really needed, it's right there. It just becomes automatic. And, you know, you don't have to go through inhaling 30 times to build up an accumulation. You know, it's, it becomes instantaneous. And it's drawn directly from the universe in the end. This is where you are heading with these exercises in the vital energy, the elements, and eventually the fluids, is to draw directly from the universe. That's where it's coming from anyhow. It's just, we have to teach ourselves how to do it. You know, it's the simplest thing in the end, but it's hard to get there. <laughs> uh, well, not hard, it just takes work. Repetition. You know, like all things in your magical training, you do it often enough, it becomes easy. Okay. Oh, and the earth element. The earth element is very grounding. If someone is just wacko, you know, just going all over the place, you know, mentally and energetically, a bit of the earth element is very grounding, very solidifying for the consciousness of the individual concerned. Um, it, it's very um, healing for all sorts of uh, psychological issues because uh, the earth element is integrating. It brings the consciousness together into an integrated unit. It also brings people into the immediate present moment. If someone is, is lost in reminiscence or fantasizing uh, about the future and what ifs, you know, a good way to bring them back to the present moment is with the earth element, okay? Now, any time you have an accumulation of an element you've created an imbalance. It is an imbalanced state. For that reason, you know, we, we, we accumulate the elements in ourselves and then we release the element so that we're not creating a permanent imbalance in ourselves. We never want to accumulate the element and just leave it there. And the same goes for when we accumulate, and 
when we uh, project an accumulation of the elements into another person, we never want to just leave it there, because we are creating an imbalance. An imbalance can be healing, and a balance is effective, it affects change, um, but we don't want to leave it there. We don't want to create a permanent imbalance. So we, you know, project our accumulation and give it time to take effect. Give it time, just like we do in our own body, till we sense what change is happening. We give it time to create that change, that the imbalance you know, of necessity creates. It creates an internal movement, you know. Anytime you're in balance, you compensate or you fall over. It's the same with the element. An imbalance of the elements creates a, a movement, some sort of change. So, we project it long enough for that change to occur for the change to begin. It's very homeopathic in a sense. Um, and then we release the accumulation. We disperse it back to the universe. So there's no longer an imbalance. But by the fact that the accumulation resided in that person, that thing, uh, you know, that part of our body, for that time, we have created the, we have instigated change. And that's what I mean by being homeopathic. You know, the, the element begins a transformation process that then continues when the element is removed, when the element is dispersed. Another thing that we can do with the vital energy, or the elements, or the fluids for that matter too, is <clears throat> well, for example, I can fill this subsidian sphere with the earth element, and it will hold that accumulation of the earth element, because it is obsidian, and it has this uh, affinity for the earth element that is physical, um, I can create an accumulation of the earth element in here that is very dense accumulation. It makes this, the, the obsidian sphere doubly heavy. It's already heavy, but whoa. Um, and it will hold on to this accumulation. It will keep that accumulation until I release it. Um, I mean like f four months, undiminished. Um, it will have this accumulation of the earth element for as, as long as I want it to, basically. Um, uh, crystals are, are very good for, for this sort of operation. Now, I would use a quartz sphere for the fire element and create an accumulation of fire element that is permanent. So any, and then I would cover it with silk. So it would be covered in silk and it would not affect its environment until I remove the silk. And then, you know, the accumulation affects the, the room, essentially, cover it with silk. So I would have at my fingertips uh, sources of the four elements um, at a moment's notice without the need of going through the accumulation process. Of course, that doesn't take any time these days. But um, So, clear quartz for the fire element. Um... Perhaps, well, clear quartz also for the air element, uh, and well, clear quartz also for the what they work for all of the elements. They will work for all the elements, but you can you can use crystals that have more 
specific affinities with these different elements. For example, with the air element, fluorite is great for the air element. Tourmaline uh, works nicely for the water element, as do the, the finer gems. Uh, sapphire is really nice uh, for the water element as well. Turquoise works very well, especially well for the water element. So, you can have these four specimens uh, around your, your, your home, uh, fully uh, charged with accumulations of the elements, covered in silk that you can then expose at any time they're needed. Uh, you can also do the same with the vital energy, with pretty much any object you choose. Have an accumulation of vital energy, really dense accumulation that is there ready uh, at a moment's notice in this way. Um, <clears throat> one important thing that I neglected to mention in my last video about the elements and vital energy was the issue of relaxing when you're accumulating the vital energy and the elements. Um, the tendency is to, you know, really strain with the inhalation and really sort of suck it in. And that's helpful in the beginning, but you want to get over that. You want to relax into it. So any inhalation will draw in the elements. You know, and when you're doing it without inhalation, just with your mind, you also want to uh, avoid, you know, the straining as you're imagining the uh, element or vital energy entering into uh, the area or, or object. You know, it, 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 you don't have to do that. That's just your mind, you know, um, it's not necessary. And in the end, it's interruptive, it's counterproductive, it's a waste of your energy when you should be spending that energy elsewhere, you know, focused on other things. The most important thing as you're beginning to work with the vital energy, with the elements, and then later the fluids, is pay attention. You know, analyze. Really analyze and get to know what the elements are. You know, what are their effects? What is the effect of the vital energy? And all these different circumstances you have to observe closely, analyze constantly keep track of what effects they have. What does it do in this, this circumstance? You know, what surprising new thing have I discovered about the effect of the vital energy? You know, always keep track. Always learn. Every experience with the vital energy and the elements is a learning experience. It's practice, you know? And practice perfects. You learn so much from doing. And that's the whole point. That's why I was saying, Barden doesn't tell you what to do with the air element, what to do with the water element. You know, you discover that as you're working with the elements. They teach you, if you're observant, but only if you're observant, they teach you quickly what they're used for. You know, how to use them, why to use them, when to use them. It's the elements and the vital energy and the fluids themselves that teach you that information. It's all right there 
in front of you and inside of you. Yes, it's all inside of you is not a joke. <laughs> it's not just some saying, you know. It's all about what goes on internally and how it affects you and how you understand. That is the way. That is the relationship that you will have with the elements and the vital energy is all based on you. Not on what someone else tells you, but on what you personally experience. Okay? Okay, so those are my ramblings today on the elements and the vital energy. It will probably be it on the elements and vital energy. But if you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Until next time, bye-bye.